It was around 5am when war broke out in a village at a crossroads where nothing ever happens. At first the dogs barked, then explosions were heard. They were firing somewhere from the direction of the headlands. The villagers ran out of their houses, scratched their heads and wondered where they could find a bomb shelter. Someone said there was one at the school, but no one knew who had the keys to it. So everyone went back to their houses and decided to just sit on their asses. In a couple of hours, Russian tanks roared down the main street, which was once named for Lenin. Naturally, there were heavy Kamaz trucks, armoured personnel, carriers, oil tankers and other such crap. The column ripped up the town's asphalt roads well into the evening and over the next days too. Some villagers jumped in their cars and headed north. Their traces were lost, while those who remained in the village, that is, almost everyone, decided to just sit on their asses and not stick their heads out, especially since checkpoints had already been set up. The village was surrounded and occupied. Fighting broke out at around midnight, but the villagers just huddled around their houses. Because who would know where to run? And here, there were neighbours all around. It's more fun in crowds. Then everybody broke up in the morning. They went to work. Those who had work, anyway. Russian flags were already flying in the town centre. The mayor was missing and half the shops were closed. The villagers rushed to stock up on bread and flour and hid their expensive cars in gardens and barns or even bathhouses. Meanwhile, that night, two brave souls pulled down a Russian flag. The first thing to disappear in the village was bread, followed by medicines and then Ukrainian national television. After that, the Russians, in this village they were always informally called goats or butchers, stripped the mobile communication wires off the TV tower and set up tension cables around it. The villagers felt as though they were on an island, cut off from the world. They walked around their village with their mobile phones, turning them here and there, looking for those cherished lines of communication. The bars did not appear on their screens and the mayor never returned. There was milk, however, which farmers began distributing for free. Because there was nowhere to leave the village to sell it. The cows were still producing milk and you can't just throw milk away. Then the Armenians began baking bread. The Turks brought in vegetables and other farmers brought in meat. The shops were completely empty, but the villagers always knew where to get what. As such, despite the predictions, no humanitarian crisis had yet occurred. Next, the townspeople buried Ukrainian soldiers. Three were found on the edge of the headlands, and several more in a molten tank where only the bones were left, so no one ever found out how many really died. For the longest time, the goats would not allow burials, but they were finally somehow persuaded by priests from the Moscow Patriarchate. Theirs was the only church in the village. People carried coffins and flags down the main street. The one that used to be named after Lenin. The one along which the goats had entered the village. The soldiers were buried in a common grave marked by a sign saying, Unknown Defenders of Ukraine. The goats watched all this from their vehicles, moving slowly through the countryside. They did not walk on foot. They tried not to let the villagers see them. Meanwhile, Wi-Fi, then mobile communications, unexpectedly returned to the village. Russian channels ran on TV, but the villagers had long been using satellite dishes, so they watched whatever they wanted. Naturally, they got their news from the internet. And on the internet, people were writing that Ukrainian flags were flying in the surrounding towns and villages, that people were capturing goats in the bushes, stealing their armoured personnel carriers and refusing to eat their humanitarian aid. The villagers scratched their heads and got to thinking. Next day, they took flags and placards and went looking for goats, shouting, Glory to Ukraine! What the hell are the goats doing here anyway? It'll be harvest season soon. This is Ukraine after all. There was never any love lost for the goats here. At first, the villagers approached the town hall and knocked, but the occupiers were not there. Only the poor mayor appeared, stiff with fear, and he disappeared again. So the villagers headed for that same old former Lenin Street to look for goats. They found their tents and armoured personnel carriers in the bushes in the outskirts of the village. There were several hundred villagers and about a dozen goats. 
Both sides were a little scared. But the villagers took the upper hand with their daring shouts and numbers. They shouted, Putin is fucked! Zelensky's our man! And demanded that the goats leave. The villagers were not sure the goats understood. So sometimes they translated Dodomo, go home in Ukrainian, into Damoy, go home in Goatish. The goats refused to come out of the bushes. So the activists climbed up on an armoured personnel carrier. They jumped on it, shouted and waved a flag, trying to break it. But nothing would break. Eventually, two brave souls solemnly peed all over it. The Russian goats would not move and the villagers all went home. Because it was already evening and they had to feed their chickens and ducks to say nothing of having to think about what to do next. Because this was already the tenth day of the occupation and not a single person in the village was sure that they would live to see morning. <laughs>